Hello, good afternoon. It's Adil Fazal here, market analyst at CFTs.com, bringing you a review of the European markets end of day's trading session, Tuesday, 6th of September 2016. Please be sure to visit Trade Signal, signals and market updates from leading providers. You can certainly uh, download the app from the uh, w.tradesignal.com site or the uh, Google Play and the Apple App Store. Okay, now in terms of uh, numbers, let's have a look at the European close. Okay, your US market certainly at the moment still uh, pushing higher, which I'll explain as to why. Uh, European market certainly mixed. You have the FTSE down quite substantially, 0.8% flush towards the close in the back of obviously oil uh, rally fizzling out. Okay, it certainly seems to be a uh, all talk at the moment and no action from the uh, the actual OPEC members. So again, all talk and no action at the moment. Uh, all talk, no action. So you can certainly see the FTSE certainly fizzling out. Also, it certainly seems that the uh, sterling rally on the back of stronger data certainly is hurting, although we did have retail sales down overnight. So again, mixed messages there. But certainly uh, stronger econ data from the uh, the UK certainly is questioning the future uh, rate cuts and uh, potential QE being phased out by the uh, BOE. Now, we have Mr. McCafferty, Forbes, Cunliffe and Carney talking tomorrow. So again, Individuals may may have inside information on, the, on those potential speeches or fear, etc., etc. Certainly, some front running uh, selling off a sell off going on there. In terms of European markets, really towards the close, we had a rally in the euro. The euro USD is certainly spiking, uh, so we had a an impressive rally in the euro USD in the back of uh, the weaker US data. Now, weaker US data certainly has sent the euro USD higher. The 200 MA certainly has held up. Oh, okay. And you've certainly seen a, a, an impressive rally in the euro. Now, the rally in the euro will hurt European equities, so bear that in mind. So uh, EU equities certainly expected to come under immense pressure uh, and certainly see weakness there. So you are looking for a risk off more than equities, which in turn should permeate through US equities. But given the fact that uh, interest rate expectations are being pushed back now, I think 21% only now, for September, it certainly is sending US equities higher for now. But again, that, that, how long have we played that game for? I mean, that game certainly seems to be played even with Jackson Hole speech as well. Um, so again, it really is that there are a lot of variables involved, okay? A lot of variables involved in trading, especially when you're day trading in such short, small time frames. It certainly is hard to project out, even for longer time frame uh, traders as well, because of the situation that's changing. Now, we've had the Kiwi in the Aussie rally. Uh, and that's nothing to do with the inherent organic uh, strength for commodities, etc., or world global growth. It's all to do with central bank divergence. Now, we have the RBA uh, held interest rates uh, steady and uh, certainly was on hold. And therefore, obviously, we know the Fed uh, itself certainly is uh, confused right now uh, with the dollar, obviously, f f being pushed low on the back of this weaker data, given the fact that nobody believes the Fed is actually going to hike. It's all talk, okay? So you can see the USD JPY flushed as well, okay, back down to the 102 level. Again, that certainly is a risk off move. The US dollar as well, as you can see here on the daily chart, quite a, an impressive thrust, and you have the unfilled gap below as well. So we could certainly see more or further a weakness in the, uh, the actual uh, dollar itself. Okay, so that certainly is a, a variable as well okay so that certainly is a variable as well now in terms of weak economic data weak economic data should actually hurt uh, global markets and that's exactly what's happened the FTSE is certainly under pressure you have the french cac down as well and the german dax barely up by 14.9 uh, points in the back of fiscal stimulus talk so again germany certainly held held strong compared to the rest now Econ data today really was all about factory orders in the morning. German factory orders certainly came in weak again, uh, exerting pressure on the downside. Germ, uh, EU GDP actually came in line, so again, thereby helping the uh, Euro, Euro USD uh, to a large extent with GDP coming in line. And that certainly is expected that Mr. Draghi is going to uh, stand still. So, no further QE for Mr. Draghi. The Euro going higher this doesn't bode well for European equities. So weak European equities, and given the fact that USD JPY is back down to 102, that generally indicates weak European, or should we say Asian equities, with the Nikkei certainly coming under immense pressure. So the daily chart, the Nikkei was already under pressure, given the fact that it was near gap fill resistance. You are going to see a flush uh, going into the um, into the Asian session, from my understanding. Okay, so again, looking for weakness there on the uh, daily chart. So certainly look, keep an eye on that, okay? Okay, so uh, I'm not sure what's happening. Here. Okay, so certainly looking for a gap fill and obviously a flush going into the close. 
again for my overnight should I say on the Nikkei which in turn should certainly lead to weakness in the uh, US and Asian and European markets from my understanding okay now let's look at the uh, technical picture now let's go to the daily chart first of all German DAX uh, the gap fill level this gap fill level with very very important level certainly has held thus far 10740 10750 daily chart you can see doji, doji candle finishing 60 minute chart you can see a bearish engulfing candle this gap level certainly holding this gap level has been quite powerful on the German DAX, okay? So again, looking for weakness there. Now, if you take the pivot high from here, connect the pivot highs together, and you can certainly see a, a key diagonal trend line as well, okay? That's, that's irrelevant for now. Okay, so German DAX, okay? Let's have a look at the German DAX. So in, intraday double top or over a two-day double top, okay, from the fifth. So you can certainly see that you have a bearish engulfing candle on the back of a stronger euro. And given the fact that Miss Merkel has concerns at home with regards to her own party losing to the anti-immigration party so political uncertainty there as well okay so again and weak factory orders we had weaker data as well on i think it was monday so again indicating a move lower down to looking at around 10 600 potentially lower so looking at a 100 point drop on the german dax potentially even more with the stronger euro that's my understanding uh, as you can see here a mini hns formation certainly brewing now so you have your left shoulder here folks okay so you have your head and then obviously this right shoulder here looking for a flush uh, in terms of gap levels there's no real gap level that you can target the downside uh, you have support at 10 620 and then obviously a pivot s3 and previous resistance equals support at 10 570 so certainly looking for 10 570 to be clipped that's really is that really is a target uh, to look out for from my understanding and my perspective that certainly is a level that i'll be looking for hns target 10 740 down to the neckline around 10 660 you're looking at um, 10740 10660 so you're looking at an 80 point drop okay so 10660 so yes 10580 makes sense okay so looking for weakness there on the german dax okay so if the german dax which is a market leader in europe is weak then you are going to see weakness elsewhere as well the french cac again gap fill resistance certainly has held okay gap fill resistance important level there on the daily chart okay 60 minute chart the french cac uh, again rejected okay rejected so looking for weakness now okay in terms of the french cac now the only real support on the french cac now can be seen back at previous resistance equal support and then obviously gap fill support as well so uh, you have two gap levels okay below potentially so first of all looking for uh, you have a bearish continuation pattern by the way okay red candle in consolidation and flush again so looking for support down at the 4490 zone so look for 4490 on the French CAC on the downside. Then you have the 200 MA and horizontal support and then gap fill support at 4440. So look for 4440 as well on the downside, okay, in terms of the uh, French CAC. Let's bring up the FTSE 100 now. FTSE 100 very weak now on the daily chart, okay. Uh, again, I have highlighted the fact that you have a, number one, you have a bull flag and then also you have a potential HNS as well. Okay, again, Mr. Carney will dictate. Mr. Carney uh, remains neutral, okay, and Sterling starts to push higher. Then you are going to see a flush in the FTSE 100 and this bull flag that really was triggered on the back of potential talk of the Saudis and the Russians coming together and colluding to, to some sort of agreement, etc., etc. Really, it's going to be interesting, let's just say that, okay. A stronger Sterling certainly hurting the FTSE, weaker oil, oil back down to 44, hurting the FTSE, so... Again, it's going to be interesting as to the next potential move tomorrow on the FTSE. Obviously, we've got the um, the BOE as well. We've got the ECB. Uh, it's going to be very interesting as to how the markets react this week. Certainly is going to be key. Okay, you've got Chinese data as well. Uh, FTSE 100 is very sensitive to Chinese data. And again, central bank divergence. And uh, again, really, I think for the FTSE, it's going to be tomorrow. Tomorrow really is a key day. Given the fact that Mr. Carney is speaking, you have manufacturing data as well. It's going to be very, very interesting. You have Mr. Conley, Mr. Conley, all the BOE uh, top dogs, okay? Uh, FTSE 100 on the 60-minute chart, you are into previous resistance equal support, okay? So watch out for this zone here. If we crack this, then obviously you are looking at the potential test at 6720 again. Given the fact that we did have a pivot, pivot nigh at 6927, it's quite interesting. Okay, going to the 10 minute chart, you have hit pivot three uh, S3 support, so again, respect that. Okay, if we do push higher, then you do have resistance at the uh, 6870. Uh, again, as always, as trading, previous support equals resistance, so watch out for those levels as well. You've got minion resistance here at 6, uh, 6840. Okay, previous support equals resistance. 
6860. So again, important zones, all important zones for the uh, the actual uh, FTSE itself. So again, um, FTSE really is overbought to a large extent. But if Mr. Carney sp obviously spoils a party and you see oil moving lower, US markets start to flush, FTSE will certainly go with it as well. My biggest concern really is the uh, Euro stocks, the CAC and the, NAS and the DAX. They certainly remain weak and therefore looking for further weakness. Okay, daily chart of the euro stocks. I shorted this uh, towards the close, okay, around the 3090 level. Certainly flushed, okay, 60 minute chart. Uh, you can clearly see that you've got a double top now. The next potential test is 3055, and then obviously you've got potential support below at 3020. So watch out for those two zones below, okay, 10 minute chart. You have support 3065, and then the near real test really is going to be around the 3050 zone. Okay, 3050 really is your next potential real solid support. But for now, a euro stock certainly remains weak. Okay, right, uh, I think that's a summation. Uh, be sure to visit cfds.com for your trading needs and take advantage of that 25% bonus. Goodbye now, folks.